Namaste angels. This is the weekly love read. Did you see the orb right away? It's like I turn the camera and they're like, oh shit, she put the camera on, run. And they all start to scurry. It's so cute. Um, but yeah, there goes another one on camera. This is my life. This is what goes on in my house. More than that, but that's a taste of what goes on in my house all day, every day. You just got to see some. All right, so anyway, welcome. Thank you for joining, not just me, us. Thank you for joining us, me and all the spirits the uh, um, of light that surround me all day, every day, all the angels that sit here with me. Um, I told you in 2016, when I first came on, you probably thought I was a lunatic then, and now more of you may have experienced different paranormal activity in your own lives. But I told you then that Archangels Raphael and Chamuel lived in my house. You know, of course, they can be wherever they are. They're, they're, um, they can be wherever else also, but that they're here with me all the time, that we talk and we hang out and all that kind of stuff. That still happens just because I don't talk about it anymore. Don't think it doesn't happen anymore. It still happens. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Love, um, June 30th through July 2nd. Can you guys believe how fast the year is going? It's sick. I want the summer to slow down a little bit so we can like actually enjoy it because I haven't done anything yet. I haven't been like, you know, really, I mean, I went swimming, but nothing too exciting. I need to go to like a real beach and all that kind of stuff. All right, anywho, I am using I'm very speedy today that may be why I'm talking the way I am too I was thinking just a moment ago I'm like this reading's gonna be fast <laughs> and I pulled out more decks because I was like I needed to be at least you know a decent length and answer people's questions and stuff for the week but I just I just feel very speedy very knight of swords um anyway I'm beginning with the king of summer who is warm-hearted, devoted, loving, and faithful. A trustworthy person or relationship enters your life. You may receive wise and compassionate advice from someone who speaks directly from the heart. So somebody that's genuine. Also going to be using the hashtag creepy deck this week and beginning with past life, which can literally be something um, that is plaguing you or maybe that's helping you from a past life and or from your past in this lifetime. Decided to keep out the Tony Carmine Salerno Universal Love Oracle that I used in the general reading. And we are beginning with Golden Path, a card that turned up in that reading. Again, today is the Pride Parade here in New York. World Pride. People will be walking down the path that we call 6th Avenue in the village. <laughs> well, to all those, you know, surrounding rainbows. And lastly, my fortune teller deck. I'm beginning with lovers. There are two paths ahead, actually. Not just one, according to this. Be true to yourself. So the one where you choose to lose, to use, uh, live your life, you know, as you see fit, even if that means coming out of some sort of closet or bag, or the one where you don't. I think that's the other option when there's two paths and the key to choosing the right one is being true to yourself. That note, let's get started. Dice first, beginning with Dirty Movie, which can for me can be about like Aquarius type stuff. Um, online dating, FaceTime, Skype, all that whatnot. Dirty Movie. No. And buy shoes. Could be walking shoes. This is my first feeling. Maybe from some sort of online date. Maybe you met somebody, it doesn't, in person, it doesn't click. You know what I mean? Or you guys can't, like, actually get it together. So, you know what? Forget it. <laughs> Just forget it. Who cares? Life goes on. Let's move on to somebody with whom you can actually form a spiritual partnership. 29. And have sex. How do you like that? 
awesome way to start the love reading. Again, I'm beginning with the King of Summer in addition to that and opening to the Princess of Summer, which is exactly what I did when I was shuffling on my own. I kept opening to the King of Summer and the Prince opposite the Princess of Summer. The Princess of Summer is sensitive, kind, open-hearted, and inexperienced. You can expect to kindle a new romantic relationship or a close platonic friendship. You may suddenly receive emotional an emotional message from someone or be invited to a social event. Both the king and the page of summer are a Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. The page may be the younger or more youthful of the two. Pages are also about, again, messages um, so receiving a text, receiving some sort of contact online, somebody swiped left or whatever it is, right? Um, <laughs> now opening to Major Arcana Card 12, Awakening, which is actually the hangman in the traditional tarot, which represents more water, the planet Neptune and the sign of Pisces, which it rules. Look at things in a different way and all will make sense. Don't worry if your progress is halted temporarily, like if things it looks like things aren't moving for a moment. They'll soon start moving again. So that could be something that you're looking to move um, with a Pisces, maybe an older one with the king of, of cups of water having shown up rather than, you know, the knight or the page again. So maybe like a Pisces that's older than you. Awakening, hangman. We need patience. Because what we've put work into will reap the rewards of that work. The planning, resources, and efforts that you've invested in your dream will reap great rewards. In the meantime, have patience and meditate on your next steps. So like that period that the hangman was talking about, that it might look like nothing's happening. You know, you're just still supposed to just, you know, act as if they are happening. Presume something is happening and keep it moving. Seven of autumn. And the four of autumn. Be cautious about living a life of extremes or seeing things in black and white terms. Consider, for example, whether you're spending too much versus hoarding your wealth or giving too much emotionally versus building up walls that keep people out. The four of autumn, um, as it relates to love, is about feeling stifled, like somebody's holding on to you too tightly. Or you doing that to somebody else. You stifling someone else. You holding on to them for dear life when the relationship is kind of, if it's not dead, it's, it needs to be healed. You know, you can't just ignore all the issues and hold on to them. You have to actually address the situation. Um, it can also just be about people, one or, or both, not being tremendously happy in the situation and sort of just doing it because it's there, because it's expected, because it, you know, it otherwise works. Maybe we've got kids together and that part works, but you know, I haven't felt anything in my heart. I haven't felt anything sexually. I haven't felt anything, whatever in, in forever, but it otherwise works. <laughs> if that's enough for you, then, you know, okay. But for, for many of us, that's not like you, you know, we, we want the whole package, genuine uh, love surrounding us that we can share with somebody else. Um, and, and sometimes, yeah, through sex, you want this. If, if there's no emotion, and I could tell you, at least for me, there's like no emotional connection and no, if I'm, if I'm not happy in a relationship, I'm not even attracted to you anymore, like really, you know, in that way. So like no physical connection, no emotional connection, just having sex, like, uh, it's not going to be good. You know, I mean, it's going to be as good as it can be for sex like that with somebody like that, but it can be much better with somebody with whom you have a connection, you know? So it's like that. When, when I describe this card and I talk to people, you know, about it in terms of like work, for example, I'll say it's like being at a job that pays the bills. It pays the bills. You don't like your boss. You don't like your customers. You don't like the work that you're doing, but it pays the bills. And so that's why you're there. But that really means it's time to start looking for a new job, right? So the same thing is, or, or to fix your situation at your current job if you're able. Same thing goes for relationships. 
opposite the seven of earth of pentacles it may mean like during this period while it seems like nothing's happening that's the time to put some new applications out that's the time when you should be looking for somebody new or deciding to work on your relationship and fix it and heal it you know not not just ignoring what's happening because you could have this instead wouldn't you prefer this the two of spring, maybe with the current person, if you can heal your relationship or with somebody new because you got out of a relationship that sucked, you could have the two of spring. Your vision, creativity and dedication to your cause have brought you great success. In fact, it may be in your best interest to get a partner to assist you in your endeavors or to expand the number of people who are helping you. The two of spring or two of wands is the divine union or twin flame card of the tarot showing up in connection to um the dice and particularly the die that came up number 29 29 is spiritual partnership that's what this is that's what we want if we could have it you know it it's like only the lucky twos are also about faith so um there may be in, in connection to the four looking at the four of earth in terms of being a four four is where we have like you know solid foundations or where we try to make sure we've built solid foundations two is a step in that two is the step where faith is required before we make it up to the four so if you have a four right now that you feel is crumbling you're not happy with that when you're trying to rebuild and you're up to step two it requires that means your faith is required of you right now right belief that you can actually rebuild to a four either with brand new materials or you know by working on your existing ones and getting them to 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 fit right and speaking of twos you got another two major arcana card 11 strength which represents the sign of leo true strength is displayed through kindness forgiveness and compassion you have tremendous personal power and courage that means you have the ability to extend this forgiveness and compassion or to seek it if you're the one who needs it or both you can do it is what this card is saying you can face whatever comes your way this week um in you know this regard even as it relates to another two and to love and to a soulmate union or divine union a twin flame relationship And the time where you were unable or you felt you were unable is coming to an end with Major Arcana card 21, the world, some cycle, something that goes around 360 degrees, the circumference is back to that point, right? And, and that means the cycle is completed. It's over. Um, this is the universe helping you to work your way through and out of a situation that is unbefitting of you to one that is, that does work for you. Congratulations on successfully accomplishing what you set out to do. You've made it through the challenges and incorporated the lessons that life offered you with grace and courage. Major Arcana card 21, the world as a three may have something to do with some sort of party of three, like the hangman that showed up here before. I don't think I pointed it out then, um, including love triangles, of course. And the world, while I haven't attributed it to any particular sign, has, an, you know, the element of fire for me. It feels like fire. So it's connected to that. And the opposite major arcana card strength, which again represents the sign of Leo, fire sign Leo. There is a lot of fire here um, for us to work with. And the, the message is to let, you know, some old stuck situation that isn't working, let it burn. Let it burn. Set it ablaze. I'll do one more. And it is the sixth of winter. The challenging times are coming to an end. See, told you, with the world. <laughs> and you can now breathe a sigh of relief. Let go of the past. Told you, let it burn. <laughs> and embrace the happier times ahead. The sixth of winter can also be about travel. Maybe visiting one another. 
um, perhaps across water. It doesn't have to be a long distance across water. It can be like state to state. Like if my friends come over to visit me from Jersey, um, Mary, <laughs> your brother and um, Simone, all of you, you guys actually come and visit me across the water. That will, you know, suffice in the area of this card. And speaking of water, we got more of it. We've seen a lot of this today with the king, the page. Now the nine of summer, really awesome one. Now's the time your dreams come true. Don't worry about how this will happen. Just give gratitude to God for all that you have and all that's still to come. And speaking of dreams and water, we also saw the hanged man. Again, representative of the sign of Pisces. All about dreams and goals and how we can achieve them. Looking at new ways that we can achieve them. Looking from a different perspective. Then actually holding on to intention with that too, the faith, holding on to our focused intentions and manifesting what we want. Sitting there praying on what we want and having those prayers come true. Dreaming in our sleep or and or wake about what we want. Goals floating around in our head and then having them come true because we held on to the faith and we held on to the focused intention. Overall, it is the five of autumn. Womp womp. I told you some of us are not happy in love. Focusing upon the negative or worrying about money or your career or even the shitty relationships of your past or present can block your progress. That's not the right intention on which to focus. Because your trust and faith are at a low point right now, it's not the best time to be trying to start something new, a business, a relationship, being self-employed, none of it. This card for me, specifically as it relates to love, it's about like fear of abandonment, fear of commitment, daddy issues, as they say, maybe mommy issues. We, we have a, a really fucked up economy um, in the West. And I can speak, you know, for United, for the United States in that regard. We have a really screwed up economy. And because of that, a lot of people in their 30s and some people in their 40s and 50s are having to go back to live with their parents, to help their parents. But a lot of people in their 30s or even 40s, never got to leave, never got to move out. You know, they've been with the parent the whole time, certainly 20s. And in some cases, particularly mother and son, because we have a different relationship. Like, I have a different relationship with my female children than I do with my male child, and that is very common. You know, like the, the weird bond that forms between a mother and a son um, you know, there's a line that we can, we have to be careful not to cross before it becomes like weird, you know, unhealthy rather than, you know, weird and quirky and, and fun and funny. My son is also my firstborn. So that's also, a, that's a different relationship too. But there's these mothers, um, especially when the child has lived there with them and if they were single, you know, if they didn't have another man in their life where the son becomes sort of like the man in their life. Not in a sexual way. I'm not talking about perverts. But I'm just talking about this. Is, the son has become the, the man on whom she depends. So how can he make himself necessarily available to you? So there's like mommy issues there where, you know, well, my mother asked me to do this, so I better stay back and help her to do that. I have a friend like this, by the way. Um, he's my age, a Gemini. He's about five years younger than me, actually. Um, but he's in his 40s, and he's a Gemini like myself. Um, his mother actually recently passed, so I don't, I don't want to, you know, make too light of it. But prior to that, he was taking care of her and his grandmother. And his relationship with women, you know, it's a f hashtag fail. That's just me looking from the outside. We never attempted to have a relationship t together. Um, actually, I met him through, you know, his interest in me, but we never, we just always became friends. You know, you got, got those relationships like that where you you plan maybe initially on it being something else and it just never does, it just never is. It's just always a friendship like that. Um, so we got some we got some men or and maybe some masculine, maybe some females of the masculine persuasion dealing with relationships like that where you are the man in your, in your you know, mother's life or mother figure. Um, 
This is also very heavily tied to past life issues and past relationship issues. Like that other relationship. I got hurt last time. And men, again, have a larger problem with this. In my opinion, my observation, a larger problem with this than females or the feminine. Like we eventually... Um, can get over our hurt and move on to someone else. You know, often we can do that. I'm not saying all of us can or all of us do it very, you know, so easily, but we can. But men, you break a man's heart. <clears throat> and usually you're the only one who's ever going to get to do that. Like he's going to see to it that that never happens to him again. And so because he's got such a guard up to block other people from breaking his heart, no one can, you know, help to heal his heart either. No one can sh show him any genuine love. And when you begin to, when he begins to feel it, and, um, you know, people say, like, if a man really wants you, he's not going to run away. He's going to pursue you. No, 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 that's not necessarily so true, especially in these kind of relationships and situations. Because, again, you're dealing with somebody who, in that respect, is fragile, is scared, the last time I let myself feel this way, I got hurt. I got broken. And I just refused to let that happen ever again. So that's what this card is about. The, now we're going to the perspective of the masculine. Divine feminine, the masculine as it relates to the feminine, himself, the union as a whole. Overall... The masculine would have the feminine do contribute toward the union, what he himself is willing to. But the universe would have the two do and even like wants them to do and wants them to help, wants to help them with, but they have to first affirm and the outcome. Divine feminine, high priestess, very nice for us. Okay, this is about observation and um you know, using your your wisdom, your intuition, your any kind of your gut feelings, your heart, any kind of information into which you can come about a given situation or relationship, taking it all into consideration, taking a step back to actually consider it first before acting. Not just like leaping out there all willy nilly and careless. A high priestess is a Gemini or perhaps a water sign. This is a time to pause and to reflect, not to take action. Trust in your spiritual gifts as nothing is hidden from your divine intuition. It's another two also. So again, it's dependent upon faith. Faith is key. Faith is important here. The masculine as it relates to the feminine may be specifically in her regard as the high priestess. And it is the sixth of winter. I told you she was a Gemini. <laughs> the challenging times are coming to an end and you can now breathe a sigh of relief. Let go of the past. So this is him in relation to that, being willing to release the past and asking her to do the same. Embrace the happier times ahead. Like let's move on pretty much literally. Maybe um, closer to the new moon. There's a crescent moon hiding back here in this picture, which is representative of a new moon. That's how they look, the crescent. We have a crescent moon or a new moon on the second of the month of July. So during this week's reading. Um, the masculine is a relation to himself, and it is seven of summer. So the goals, the dreams that I talked about, there may be even other options that he has to mull over and decide what it is he wants. It's time to stop procrastinating and to make a decision so that you can move forward with a priority. Maybe you're the priority. Maybe she's the priority. Maybe we both are priority together. If you need more research, then do so. But don't overthink the situation. Listen to your heart. Masculine on um, the union as a whole this week, and it is hermit. So again, it's it's like to answer these questions, he has to go within. Take time for contemplation, to retreat and to go within. Be a beacon for others on their path to spiritual enlightenment as well. Something may be illuminated. Something may come to light 
with regard to the union as well. Um, he may shed some light on your situation and your status from his point of view. With the hermit showing up. Major Arcana card, the hermit, represents the sign of um, Virgo, by the way. And so far with all this Virgo and Gemini, um, you know, Mercury may be at play. Mercury, which goes retrograde this week, is already in shadow, um, may be behind this, <laughs> this energy this week. Um, overall, nice. The Ten of Summer. It's time to express your love and appreciation for family, be it relatives or chosen family of close friends. Congratulations may be in order on happy, fulfilling marriage, as well as raising happy and balanced children. But the masculine would have the feminine do contribute surrender toward the union. It is Ace of Autumn, so a new abundant start. Like let's scrap all the let's scrap that four of pentacles, the four of autumn. Let's scrap the five of autumn feeling that is our overall energy here. And let's start new. That may be a brand new feminine, a brand new female with a brand new relationship. Or let's start what has been an unhealthy, you know, or relationship or relationship that has not grown, has not flourished the way we would have wanted to. Let's start over there. Let's fix our relationship. Either way, Ace of Autumn. You can expect a windfall of abundance, such as money, timely assistance, or a serendipitous meeting. A rewarding, you might get some rewarding advice too. You may be offered a fabulous new job or a promotion or the prospect of a profitable business venture or investment, or again, new relationship as it relates to love in the love reading. Masculine, um, what he himself is willing to do, contribute, surrender toward the union this week. And it is Major Arcana card 19, the sun, which represents the sign of Sagittarius. Or perhaps other fire signs. The, um, Earth's star, the sun, the actual sun, rules the sign of Leo. Mercury enters Leo this week. Um, in addition to, again, going retrograde, your plans will work out well, bringing you happiness and prosperity and success. You'll garner the recognition for your accomplishments that you so richly deserve. This is a lot of light. Okay. The hermit, again, can illuminate things, shed some light on stuff with the contemplation, with the introspection. You are enlightened and can shed light on things. And the sun illuminates everything too, sheds light on subjects. So I think we're going to, um, at a minimum, there'll be some information that comes out, whether it is, you know, in a conversation, direct conversation, or some other way, there will be information that comes out that um, helps you to figure out what, what your next step is, what to do, whether you're the masculine or the feminine. What the universe would have the two do and wants to help them with, what they have to first affirm is work, 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 got to work at it. It's the perfect time to learn all you can by returning to school, taking a seminar, or conducting research. Do your best work, and the law of attraction will help to bring you the prosperity and career advancement or relationship advancement, the growth that you are seeking, wants to help you with, with that. And the outcome is the moon. I shouldn't be surprised. Major Arcana card 18, the moon, represents the sign of Pisces yet again, um, as does the seven of summer for me, although it's not a court card, I, it just always makes me feel really Neptunian and Piscean um, with all the like head in the clouds sort of feeling and ideas and things floating, options and whatnot. Um, the moon definitely represents the sign of Pisces. Earth's actual moon <laughs> tends to represent... Uh, or, or not just tends to, but does represent the sign of cancer, rules the sign of cancer. It's important to trust your intuition, even if you're unsure of what's happening. All will be revealed soon. So worry is unnecessary. The moon guides us to just move forward based on our feelings, our intuition, our gut feelings, what our heart is telling us to do. The moon also this week, um, or the sign of cancer rather, Speaking of all this Gemini, Venus, who is a ruler of Gemini, enters Cancer this week. Um, 
and she's going to be making moves in the area of abundance. Venus is also the ruler of abundance, love and money. So she she's going to be in Cancer, which is one of her most loving placements possible and making things happen in those areas. Also, when the moon and the sun show up in the same spread, right next to the other, no less, um, something definitely comes out. Right, some the What's done in the dark always comes to light, but something is definitely coming out. Something will be illuminated um, this week in, you know, the area of love and in relation to what we've seen here in this spread. I'm definitely feeling, and maybe we'll see it here um, in the spread, something that I feel is more so for the masculine than the feminine, tied to, again, our past life and or relationships from our past, um, possibly involving our mother, possibly in, in that relationship again, um, possibly involving, you know, a female from the past, a karmic feminine energy. This karmic feminine energy can also represent one's mother. She can be the karmic feminine energy. You know, just seeing one doesn't mean that um, the masculine is, you know, involved romantically or sleeping with, you know, another woman or whatever. That's not what it means. It's a feminine energy. It might not even be an actual person manifested as an actual incarnated person, but just an, an, an energy that um, is surrounded by them because every single freaking thing is energy. Everything is energy. And so... It doesn't have to be in the form of a, of a human incarnation to hold us back, to formulate some sort of um, block, obstacle, cord of attachment. Um, I myself have an ex. He is married. We are, not, we are not involved. I never tried to be involved with him. He never tried to be involved with me um, when he was married. But at the same time, um, you know, he still would prefer to be, he still regrets that we didn't get married. And it's not something that you get over in a day, a month, whatever. It's been years. It's been decades. You know, a decade is 10 years. It's been more than one set of 10 years um, that we've, you know, known each other and or that he's had these um, feelings for me or vice versa and that we're not married. That he married somebody else. He's got to live with that. None of, I'm not saying he doesn't love his wife. I'm not saying he, you know, dislikes her, hates her, anything. I don't. I don't claim to know anything about their relationship. All I can speak to, and all I do know, is that he still, after all this time, misses me, and so that's what I'm feeling too. Such situations, scenarios like that. Like you can choose something else. You can choose what maybe comes easier or what people prefer for you, you know, other people, outsiders, what society deems is more correct. You know, um, again, speaking of pride today with the parade, you can choose to live a straight life or at least pretend to, to have the world believing that you're straight. You can choose to be with a man if you're a female or to be with a female if you're a male and you're homosexual, um, but the feeling, the yearning for with whom you really want to be does not go away. That doesn't mean you don't love in some capacity who you're with, but there's levels to this, as they say, there's degrees of love, and this sort of love that remains for decades and maybe perhaps never leaves ever, which is true, Love can escape you if you let it. It's like a matter of choice. This is where free will is coming into play in a really serious way this week. Where you got to know, you got to acknowledge that if you, if you choose this, you chose this. You make a conscious decision to remain connected, whether by an ethereal cord to this type of energy or to an actual person. 
that's not with whom you truly want to be at your core. You make a choice to do that. Like that lover's card that I'm going to start with in a minute that says it's two paths. And I said the way that those two paths were coming across to me, um, the, in, the energy that I was feeling from them is that one is your true path. So if you follow your heart, like the card suggests, you're going to go down that true path. And the other just, it simply is not your true path. Bring that female. All right, this is the other option. This is the other option. True, genuine passion. Two of wands energy. Two of wands, of course, the representation of the divine union or twin flame relationships in the tarot. Communication. Travel, which represents um, a chariot kind of card to me, kind of energy to me. Can be about actual travel, maybe visiting um, each other. It could be metaphoric or figurative, like revisiting a situation. I, I often connected to um, like retrograde kind of energy, like going back to a situation. You see the plane like going that way. Um, can represent an actual cancer, perhaps, in your life uh, as well. Can be just about movement. Can be about moving planes, trains, automobiles. So opposite communication. We could maybe be discussing a move or discussing travel and or we can have movement in the area of communication where we hadn't been able to talk before for whatever reason. Or we hadn't had, um, you know, healthful communication. We have movement in that area now. Travel and mature female. On that note, having sort of graduated from past life and brunette female to arriving at, you know, to movement and then arriving at the mature female, I think I will cut. Control. So these are like the representation of the chords that I was talking about. There's somebody being puppeted here. You can choose because it's all about choice. We're not really stuck, even if it feels like it. Um, so to get back to like that four of earth kind of energy where you're just in this relationship because you're in it, not because you that's where you truly want to be or you're in it because you're in it. And it's not going as you would have it go, but you just feel like you are trapped and can't put any energy toward changing it and repairing it. Then you're allowing yourself to be, you know, run around by a marionette. That's a choice. Or you can choose to cut these cords. Or you can choose to seek someone to help you to cut these cords if you don't know how to do it yourself. Overall energy this week, so perfect, um, is karma. Yep. Divine being or couple, because my readings are for singles too. People who have not yet their have not yet met their partner. People who are in separation. You know, we are you are all included. All you have to be is a um, divine being of the light for my reading to be specifically meant for you. Um, of course, we're joined by other people who are just interested in a love reading, and that's fine too. They're welcome too. But for whom my readings are meant are divine beings of light, the members of the elect, whether you are illumined also or, you, you know, or not, it is for you. Masculine's higher self, near future, it's like the Impossible Burger, right? It was meant, created... Um, to help with or find ways to sort of fight um, lack of, of meat. It works for vegans. It was, wasn't made for them, though. <laughs> um, it's like that sort of thing. 
So enjoy it. If it, if it works for you, if my readings work for you, they resonate with you, um, whether you um, have identified as someone who's on this path or not. But if certainly if you have identified as somebody who's on this path, who believes that they're a member of the elect, um, you know, one of the 12 families of Abraham or Israel or any of that, then you are in the right place. You have found the right place, whether you've met your partner or not. What the masculine can do to help himself. Um, what the universe would have that you do and even wants to help us with. But we have to first, you know, commit, affirm to it and the outcome. Divine being or couple. Boom. What did I say? You see, when I feel stuff, I got to tell y'all. I got to tell y'all what's coming up. Um, so that when it shows up in the cards also, after I have shuffled them in front of you and cut them into six in front of you and got them all mixed up, when exactly what I was talking about shows up in the cards, that's what I like to see. True love. So again, matter of choice. You can choose to be with this, despite what your external world may, you know, feel or communicate to you about that. Or your feelings. Sometimes it's not the external world. Sometimes it's what I was talking about before. Like I began to mention, if they say, they say that if a man, you know, truly wants, you know, his mate, you know, whatever male, female alike, uh, whatever he's into. If he truly wants to mate, he's going to, um, you know, pursue them relentlessly. D yes, that happens, but that's not always true. Sometimes because of that, he runs in the opposite direction. It's easier for him, for his heart, especially if he's been hurt, if it's been broken, and especially if it's been broken or hurt by the object of his, you know, true affections and true love, it's going to run in the other direction. It's easier to marry somebody else, or it feels like it, at least, in the meantime. feels like it's easier to marry this other woman or man that doesn't, you know, drive me insane <laughs> um, in, a, in a love way, you know, that I, can, that I can maintain some sort of control. I don't become vulnerable. I can control this. I can, you know, there's a limit to how much I feel for this other person, how much emotion I invest in this other thing. With this one, the truth, I can't control any of that. I'm all in and I'm, all, I'm completely vulnerable, I'm completely exposed and anything can happen to me and I might get hurt again like last time. So they run away from that. This is a, this is a time when a choice is coming. Where you're going to have to consciously, not just accidentally or, you know, it ended up that way. Um, so, you know, because you acted out of subconscious, you're going to have to consciously choose this week, some of you. Um, you're going after that path that's maybe a little bit scary because that's the real one, or you're going to take, you know, the easy way out. True love. Maybe this will tell us how we got here because this is the recent past. Something went on. What was it? Hmm. Young male. I think young male was in this position last week, too. Um, young male may have recently had some sort of aha moment, revelation, where, again, yeah, maybe his mother um, had been controlling him to an extent, or other people in his life, again, society had been deeming what's right for him, what's wrong for him. But young male has sort of, you know, gotten his... His, his, you know, <laughs> he's matured. He's gone through puberty. He's sort of grown up and he's a big boy now. And, you know, he's out on the, he's seeking his freedom out on the open road and the drop top. This can, doesn't have to be an actual young male. It can be somebody that's youthful, somebody that's like reclaiming their youth. Like how um, uh, Congresswoman Mac Maxine Waters, I'm reclaiming my time. Somebody that's reclaiming their time. Maybe they wasted a lot of time in the wrong scenario. They wasted a lot of time in the wrong situation, the wrong life for them. They're reclaiming their time. They're going to go back and get it. So that, that's reflected by um, being youthful too. It can be somebody um, also who is a mutable sign perhaps. We are particularly youthful and sort of like forever young, Gemini, Virgo, um, Pisces, Sagittarius, There may be something coming up this week 
for speaking of all the differences, you know, younger male, older female, vice versa, um, or um, not necessarily male, female, masculine, feminine, could be, you know, same gender, could be completely non-binary, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, but there, there may be an age gap. Then maybe you maybe you don't have a hang up about sexuality, but you have a hang up about age. That can still be, you know what I mean. Um, so that I think um, is what's come up in the recent past as it relates to young male. But near future, boom. You see, I told you, he grew up. Recent past, he was a young male. Near future, courting man. Courting man, not a boy anymore. And crossing the true love, quite possibly in pursuit of that, this courting man. Right? That's a, and this is an indication of the choice that I've been talking about that's being made. Masculine's higher self. Where's your head at? Uh-huh. Boom. What did I say? There's a choice that has to be made. Here is more um, affirmation of that. Triangle. Some sort of party of three. Possibly a love triangle, but not necessarily. I've already been over what other kind of potential parties of three there may be. It could just be an outsider, again, like somebody's mom or something, butting their nose in. Could just be somebody's another energy that's butting in. Even if you've, you know, you claim you've made a choice already, if you haven't really cut the cords, um, you know, you can say whatever you want, but it's it's there's still an attachment there. You know, at the soul level where it matters. That's what you that's where you gotta do the work. That's from where you need to release. Um blocks to individual or shared progress and perhaps even union, other than the triangle. New love. So again, we need love on new. We need to repair this existing relationship that's not working. Um, whether we're physically together or in separation, something wasn't working, we need to repair, we need to fix it and get back on track. Or, yeah, we need to choose the new, the brand new path and new person. And not having done that yet um, is what's holding us up. Even in just a matter of being open to new love, maybe we're completely single. Again, I read for single people too. Haven't even met this divine partner, but we have etheric connections to people from our past. You're blocked also. Doesn't matter if you don't have a physical body standing there with you. If you, at the soul level, the emotional level, the spiritual level, you're still tied to someone else, you're still tied to someone else. What the feminine can do to help herself though. Move on, <laughs> get moving um, or revisit situation depend you know it's going to be different for different people this is a love reading for the collective for all the elect um again a, a, a for some of us an actual um cancer may be specifically involved you know particularly significant uh in this scenario too or this can be tied to one of the other one of the planets in retrograde and the signs that they rule. So um, Mercury, again, um, ruler of Gemini and Virgo. Saturn, ruler of Capricorn, currently retrograde in Capricorn. I think Saturn goes into opposition with another planet this week. It's something I was reading. Um, you guys may want to check that out. Pluto, also currently retrograde, also in Capricorn. Um, Pluto, ruler of Scorpio. Um, what else? I think that's it for the retrograde planets. But there's not enough. <laughs> and and where their placement of where they're retro where they're located, you know, comes into play too. So like I said, Ju oh Jupiter. I don't even think I mentioned Jupiter. Jupiter currently retrograde in Sagittarius, which it rules. So there's Sag, there's um, Pluto, ruler of Scorpio is in Capricorn. There's your Capricorn. Saturn's also retrograde in Capricorn. So again, there's your Capricorn people that are affected. Um, now you have Mercury going into retrograde that brings us Gemini's into it that brings the Virgos into it and Mercury's actually going to be located in Leo and then Pisces so they'll be affected also um that's seven signs that are like activated what the masculine can do to help himself young female speaking of Jupiter and Sagittarius so 
for some, we have the young male crossing the young female, and this is really just about young love, young budding love. And that doesn't mean the people are necessarily young, um, but we're talking about this new love. Again, that's what he can do, like, you know, be in pursuit of that. New or renewed, you know, or love anew. Budding love and being lighthearted and youthful like a mutable sign, like a Sagittarius, like a Gemini. Virgo, Pisces. Um, what else he can do, again, is allow himself growth and expansion. Because Sagittarius, or Jupiter, ruler of Sagittarius, is also the planet of growth and expansion. So that's how we got from young male to courting man in the first place. Allow himself continued growth. Jupiter, also the planet of luck. I personally don't believe in luck, so I attribute it to karma. When I picked up this karma card, guess who was behind it that we need to contend with, deal with this week? The karmic feminine energy. Also upright. What the universe would have the two of us to do, wants us to do, even wants to help us with, but we have to first affirm to it, is gifts. So this is, again, about the growth and expansion. That's what it wants us to. Uh, and pay attention to your gifts, the ones that you already have uh, existing that you know, you're cognizant of and know how to, to use, which most of us have at least some intuition on which to rely. We, we all get butterflies in our stomach. We all get gut feelings. We all get, you know, um, the pitter patter of our heart. Our heart skips a beat for something or someone. Pay attention to those and the outcome. Happiness, it's another party of three. We move from this sort of negative party of three to a happy and celebratory one and one that is indicative again of like a new new love uh the birth of something new a fertile energy sort of like the uh empress gives us nurturing loving mother abundant deciding what to do next. I was going to do advice, but I feel to do another spread, actually. So now we're going to begin with the Ace of Autumn. Mm -hmm. Speaking of parties of three and pain and hurt and separation, opening to the three of winter. Sadness is part of life, but you don't have to enjoy it alone. You made a little time to heal, but once you work your way through the emotions, you'll be stronger than before. Um, there was a crescent moon in that picture as well. So this could be too connected to um, the new moon and the solar eclipse could be helping us to, to leave you know, this kind of hurt behind and allow for new love in our lives. Speaking of love, the lover is major arcana card six, which represents the sign of Gemini in the tarot. True and long lasting love finds its way into your life. Follow your heart with caring actions and choices. The lovers. And life experience. Major Arcana card 16, life experience or the tower. Important changes are coming into your life that will require you to take action. Don't hesitate to move in new directions that you know are right for you. Where do you know they're right for you? In your heart. Uh, the tower opposite the lovers. Again, the tower can be good, and this can be being overwhelmed by love. Like that Kanye West song, Kanye West, sometimes love um, knocks you down. It's like Kanye and uh, Kerry Hilson. Sometimes love knocks you down. It towers you. It's just too much. You can't control it. The tower. And the seven of winter. Caution will help you to avoid the loss of valuables, including non-material resources such as peace of mind or love. Love is one too. Be aware of the results of your actions as well as what others might be doing behind your back. Again, if the choice is yours, be careful what you choose. 
because some things can't be undone. Well, I mean, everything can be undone, but, you know, once you marry somebody else, <laughs> it's kind of like you married somebody else. I mean, not that you can't ever, you know, get out of that, but, you know, you made a choice. You made a sort of like a binding choice. Um, so think about it wisely first. And if action, an action like that or action at all, or non-action for that matter, is going to cause you to miss out on something, if you would be robbing yourself of an opportunity for love by, you know, acting or not acting, then you make a conscious choice what you're going to do and be aware. I'm, I'm choosing to rob myself of this opportunity. Why not? This, contrarily, this can be about you taking a risk, the Seven of Winter. We also have to keep in mind um, when the Seven of Winter shows up that there can be other people um, who are trying to rob us of our joy. And again, maybe those are that, that third party, perhaps. Misery loves company. There can be a reason why, you know, somebody else, not because they dislike you or hate you or whatever, are consciously even trying to hurt you, but to... Um, make themselves feel better. Sometimes they may lead you in the wrong direction. We've got two sevens here, by the way. Sevens are about spirituality, um, God. So this is, um, you know, really strong energy, um, aside from the fact that this is major arcana. Sevens also about, like, when you do get guidance and you feel those nudges from the universe, actually following. When you follow and you... Um, see sevens the angels are saying yes like you you know you did what we asked for of you and then they reward you so sevens also represent good fortune when you you know make the right choices tower and major arcana card 15 ego or the devil you may feel that you're trapped in your situation right exactly that's what we've been talking about but that's not true we've also talked about that <laughs> Be careful not to overly focus upon material wealth and also to break free of negative thinking, like the kind of thinking like I'm, I don't have any choices, I'm stuck. Get away from that. Uh, Major Arcana card, the devil represents the sign of Capricorn, by the way. And again, the um, Pluto and Saturn are both located there in retrograde right now in Capricorn. The king of water, well, I'm sorry, winter rather. Maybe the king of water is significant too. King of cups. Anytime I have like a slip of the tongue or a Freudian slip or something like that, it, it's, it's, it's always a reason to it, even if I don't know what it is. Um, intelligent, impartial, respected, and unemotional is the king of winter. At this time, it's very important that you communicate clearly, be objective and unemotional, act as professionally as possible. If you need advice, seek out the most experienced expert that you can find. The King of Winter is a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. Could be here because of Mercury. Again, our ruler, who goes retrograde this week in Leo. Who enters Leo and then goes retrograde. Um, Mars also enters Leo. I forgot about that. Let me just throw that out there while I'm talking about Mercury. Um, our other ruler that's connected to winter and air. Venus could be her even though it's the king, could still be her. <laughs> um, and she enters cancer this week. Could just be somebody likened to uh, those traits or attributes. Could be a lawyer, a judge, you know, some sort of professional by which you are, um, will be impacted this week. Ah, there he is. Speak of the devil. <laughs> the king of summer. And look who's also sticking up. The queen. All right. I couldn't have done that if I try on purpose. If I try <laughs> the king of summer is warm hearted, devoted, loving and faithful. A trustworthy person or relationship enters your life. You may receive wise and compassionate advice from someone who speaks directly from the heart. And of course, the queen of summer. And now we've got a couple at the table and the king of winter wants to know I'm still here, too. I want you to know he's still there. Um, this is after the cutting and everything. The queen of summer is compassionate, 
loving, giving, and psychic. This is a time of deep emotions and heightened intuition that you can trust completely. Be mindful that you don't ignore your own needs while caring for those of others. King of Summer, Winter, we just found out what he was about. And the Four of Spring now wants to be seen too. It's time to kick back, relax, and to celebrate all that you have Joy arises from some from success in your career, the completion of a project or a very happy home life. So this is about reclaiming again your time, your joy. How will you do that? By moving away from somebody, by moving close to somebody. Look at the three of them. They all want to be seen again. So quite possibly involving um, air and water. And definitely involving um, partnership. And since this is the love reading, romantic partnership. Not only since this is the love reading, but it's also with the four of wands sticking up here too. Overall en energy is the six of winter. So this is back. The challenging times are over, coming to an end. And you can now breathe a sigh of relief. Let go of the past and embrace the happier times ahead. I think the feminine has two there. And the subconscious... Also want to use these. Fortune teller cards again beginning with the lovers. There are two paths ahead. Be true to yourself. And opening to wish. Your heart's desire is ready to come true. Lovers. And angel. Your angels are guiding and protecting you on your spiritual journey. Angel, I'll do one more. Oh, wow. It is unity. A time of divine understanding, renewal, peace, and hope. You radiate and attract great love. Angel. But first, thorns, weathering the challenge ahead, will bring in a new and positive future. Overall energy is snake. Your intuition and healing powers will guide you to a better path. But be careful. There's two here. A lot of doubles this week. And I should have put the larger card on the bottom. Crowning the masculine. Oh, uh, it's like double pentacles. <laughs> the six of autumn and goals. Some sort of assistance is coming through um, this week in the form of unconditional love, maybe from another part. The universe is sending you something that's going to help you um, to achieve your goals. Progress is positive and personal goals will be achieved. Six of autumn. Your success and prosperity have allowed you to pay off debts, to acquire wise loans, or to receive a grant or scholarship in return for heaven's blessings. Be sure to share the wealth with others through donations of time or money to reputable charities. What does that mean? At least for me, it means unconditional love. The ability to both give and receive. And when we receive, to give maybe to someone else, to pay it forward in another way. To continue to put out that positive energy so that it, the cycle of positivity continues. And flow. Of abundance. Really nice way to start masculine. 
But you got these two cards here. All right. You got this fire and you got it attached with um, a lion, with Leo the lion. So you got that fire energy going for you there. Um, so I'll start with these two that are like of the same suit. You're working far too hard and the stress will soon become too much. Reach out for help from others and take some time to play and to enjoy life. So you need some balance in your life, masculine. You need to rid yourself of the feeling of being burdened or burdensome upon somebody else. And the way that you can feel that way, again, we've been, to, I, you know, I'm going to guess talk about it this week until I'm like blue in the face, is to choose what you want. You, if you're burdened by other people's desires, other people's goals, other people's plan for your life, and that's not your plan, you need to relieve yourself of that burden. You need to relieve yourself of that burden. You need to let it go, lay it down, um, or it's going to be, become too stressful for you. So here is you, you know, roaring. No, that's not what I want. I want this. Well, that is what I want. And you're going to take control back. You are the king of your jungle, the master of your destiny. Harness the loyal and protective aura of the lion and charge ahead magnificently. Period. This other card, while you're at it, beware. Be careful of who you trust at this time. So even loved ones, even family members, um, you know, we can't just take their advice. We have to only accept what, with what we align, um, with what resonates with us for our higher good. Masculine subconscious. The nine of spring. This is telling you that you can persevere, you can do anything you need to do. You've worked hard, and what you've created is impressive and worthy of protecting. Annoying challenges may pop up, but don't worry. You'll get through them just as you have in the past. So you'll be able to tackle whatever this is, especially with this energy of Leo the Lion. Um, also, the way you're going to get through it and the way you're going to tackle those things is by paying attention to your intuition and following the, the divine guidance that you receive. The moon. Pay attention to your intuition at this time and move ahead confidently. So even if you don't know again what's on the other side, um, go with what you do know and what you do feel and what you do want in pursuit of these goals that we started out with. Feminine crowning us... This is the nine of winter. Oh, some of us are nervous. We're, we're afraid. Your worries and fears aren't real, though. They're fueled by focusing on the negative, which gives power to that of which you're afraid. Stop worrying. Let go of fear and everything will be all right. Um, it may be as it relates to um, um, an actual marriage, a 3D marriage or a soul marriage, one that you want to leave or one that you want to be in. You know, it can be either way that you're worried um, since we're reading for several people here. But um, for everybody for whom I'm reading, on the, at least of the feminine persuasion, you're attracting emotional fulfillment and unconditional love. So whether you're leaving a relationship that's not good for you, or you're just moving toward one that is, or you're out there single on the brink of meeting you know, your person, it's because you're attracting emotional fulfillment and unconditional love. That's the basis for it all. So let it happen. Let go of anything that's blocking you that you're holding on to. Feminine surrounded by. Ah, oh, the four of wands is also back. So we got this wands, thorn. Sometimes it, um, actually the wands are called thorns in, in some decks. Um, it's time to kick back, relax, and to celebrate all that you have. Joy arises from success in your career, the completion of a project, or a very happy home life. Some of us are really on the brink of being with our person. Um, maybe for whatever reason you were separated, you lived in different places. Um, I actually have a, a, a client where the masculine was in jail. You know, so you're starting... I, I, well, there's more than one because it's, it's somebody who watches my videos who's awaiting her the return of hers right now too but different things maybe you were you know not separated because you wanted to be but you just were you know you lived in two different countries I've had that too um, and so now it's becoming more and more real as you approach and now the fear is setting in so what you want to watch out for that but weathering any challenges that are associated with it now will lead to positivity in the future. This, joy, happiness, four of wands, maybe even marriage. Feminine subconscious, where we had gotten the two cards from the animal tarot. 
One is the Ace of Spring, so that brand new start opportunity that's going to make us happy. A wonderful new opportunity presents itself. It may have come as a surprise, but you'll still want to leap into action and to passionately pursue every possibility um, that comes your way. In the Eight of Winter, speaking of jail, you know, it can be this. Maybe somebody's being released early, unexpectedly, um, or released from a situation, from their marriage, that you didn't know they were getting a divorce or whatever. Um, and now something's becoming available to you. It's so easy to convince yourself that you're trapped when you really aren't. Trust that God will lift you to new heights and give you a greater sense of self-confidence to affirm if you affirm your freedom first. You know, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett, um, he had been interested in her long before they ever started dating or got married. And he was married himself. Oh, okay, I could have used him. I'd have to use my ex as an example. <laughs> I could have used Will Smith before. He was married. He had no plans to ever divorce. He was against it. So even though he wasn't as happy as he ultimately could be, as happy as he is now with Jada, he was just going to settle, you know, and be with this other woman because he was so dead set against divorce. But the surprise that came to him unexpectedly was that she divorced him. The wife dumped him. He wasn't expecting that. I think it was like something like Valentine's Day or their, their anniversary or whatever. He was, it was, he was totally blindsided. Um, thinking back on the story that I, a long time ago, I heard him tell this story. Um, yeah. So it came totally unexpected to him and I'm sure to Jada too, you know, but she, the ex-wife opened up the possibility of he and Jada being together. And, you know, obviously they, you know, ever since they, they have been. That was the chariot. She provided the chariot. She provided the area for movement. Charge ahead with confidence. Stay strong and focused. So without the worry is basically what this is saying. And without trying to figure out, but how's this going to work? Because this is going on. This is going on. Just follow your guidance, right? Stay in your lane. <laughs> Stay in your lane. You're driving. Right? You're, you're driving. You're on your chariot. Stay in your lane. Crowning. Two of autumn. Talking about choices again. And juggling. And it's coupled with luck. So it's like earth on earth. You're right to be strong and optimistic about the opportunities ahead. So you're wrong to be paranoid and nervous about it. You may be under stress, though, because of multiple jobs or like options and stuff. Too many responsibilities for one person to manage. You're trying to juggle a whole bunch of stuff. It's important, however, to balance your work and your personal life. Because right? all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, Jill a dull girl. Um, We've got to bring a spirit of fun to what we do. So that, that's, again, where the energy of being youthful comes into play, too. Not too you know, heavy and uptight. At the foundation, the root, 10 of winter. So something, some difficulty coming to an end, maybe some betrayal or something that we experience. It's that is no more. It's the end of a career path. Could be the end of a relationship. Could be the end of a marriage. Even the end of a career path project or relationship brings feelings of mixed joy and sadness, relief and disappointment. Put aside your fears about these changes and trust that a brighter future awaits regardless. And that is coupled with judgment. So again, this can be coming with a legal, an actual legal judgment, perhaps. Some of us are getting divorced or something like that, um, or separating. If we're not legally married, we're separating. And so it's showing up in the form of, you know, like the, with this officiality that it, it is done, period. Soul searching will bring you inner peace, however, in many areas of your life. And at the heart of the matter, ooh, ooh. Wow, look at this combination. It is Major Arcana card 15, Ego or the Devil, which is us feeling trapped, right? Feeling stuck in something. You may feel that you're trapped in your situation, but that's not true. Be careful not to overly focus on, upon material wealth and to break free of negative thinking. Look what it's partnered with, birth. So it's like if you can break free of this, you can start anew. If you can break free of what's holding you back, what's imprisoning you, you can start a new birth. Universal energy brings you opportunity and possibility. And speaking again about the retrogrades and that being like a driving force behind this, this is Pluto retrograde 
completely, right? Birth, rebirth and death, Pluto, Scorpio, ego, the devil, Capricorn. Pluto is currently retrograde in Capricorn. So I think that that's what's the driving force behind um, all of this kind of stuff. But more importantly, there's a way out. There's a way out if you're one of these people that feels stuck in these situations. It's just up to you to make the choice to do it. Further advice to you as you navigate that energy and decide what you're going to do. Masculine tantric union. This is about this is about that higher level. It's reminding you about the higher love that's possible. Higher energy forces well above, you know, 3D connections. This is telepathy. This is soul touching sex. You know what I mean? Um, and again, you got a choice. You want this or you want regular. <laughs> That's what's up to you. Uh, feminine for us. Abundance awaits. So just like the masculine um, sort of wants for us and offered to us that ace of pentacles that showed up in the first spread. This is, we have an opportunity to have this, but it requires vulnerability. It requires letting go. It requires, you know, surrender. You see, there's a nude woman here. She's made herself completely exposed and vulnerable. That's what we have to do also, be willing to do. Aw, the masculine is union. So we saw evidence of that too. Um, for those who are willing to take the risk and to make the choice and to maybe not, you know, look for the easy way out, but to face the, make the hard choices, as they say, union awaits you this week <sighs> with a soulmate. Okay. With a soulmate. This is the true love. Remember, look, oh, how many times, like you know, how many different ways can they show you the same thing? Two of spring, two of wands, the, the um, divine union, the twin flame card of the tarot. Your vision, creativity, and dedication to your cause have brought you great success. In fact, it may be in your best interest to get a partner to assist you in your endeavors or to expand the number of people helping you. Again, the two of wands uh, is the divine union card. We started out with the dice with 29, which is representative of spiritual partnership too. These cards are all speaking of spiritual partnership as well. But the feminine, though, womp womp, five of autumn is back. Focusing upon the negative feminine or worrying about money or your career or, again, shitty relationships and lack and void and the past and all of that stuff, it blocks your progress. If your faith is low, at a low point, it's not a good time for you to start any of these new things, right? Twos represent faith. You need two to get the two of wands. And lastly, from the fortune telling cards to the masculine. Oh, geez. This reading is so lovey-dovey. <laughs> Love surrounds all your connections. Move forward positively in all areas of your life, masculine. And feminine, lastly for us, it's about conquering this week. Mountain, know that you're protected as you face challenges, but remain cautious. So I, I think feminine for us... Um, Again, some of us have challenges because we're getting out of a relationship or we're needing to cut ties to a relationship, cut cords to a relationship, maybe more so than the masculine this week. Um, but you can do it, is what this says. I hope that you guys have found this helpful, that you have enjoyed it. Thank you again for liking, sharing, subscribing, and for joining me. Please do, yes, you guys do the sharing. I am so tired of making the announcements, and I know it's not your fault. It's, you know, it is what it is. Um, and, and it's YouTube, it's, as far as 3D stuff, it's YouTube, as far as 5Ds and, and you know, other realms, it's other realms, it's, you know, the dark and whatnot, but I just can't, I just can't, like, also, like, do all the readings and also be all over social media, um, you know, telling people that I've, that I've done them because our notifications don't work. So, um, I appreciate you checking your own notifications, clicking the bell again, if it, if it's turned itself off and for sharing the videos on my behalf, I really do appreciate it. And I thank you. Namaste guys.